Riviera's 505 SUV is a boat we tested several years ago. It's been expanded on by making it into the 50 Sport Motor Yacht. All that took was the addition of a flybridge on top to make it a completely different boat. I'm going to do a full performance evaluation on it and see how she performs. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. There are two 10-inch steps that bring us up to the side decks, which measure 17 inches wide. Bulwarks come up 12 inches and the rails top out at 33. On the side of the cabin, here's an optional rail and then a standard rail just ahead of that. Then we come up another 10 inch step just past a 10 inch midship cleat. Fully forward, we come to the ground tackle, it consists of a Muir windlass, chain stopper, cleat, roller, and that is handling a 35 kilogram ultra anchor. There's a swivel for self riding the anchor. To the port hand side, there's both fresh and raw water wash down. There's a remote control for the windlass, and to the starboard side, access to the road locker. The engine room is accessed from a hatch in the mezzanine seating area. Let's take a look. Mm. Well equipped engine room, not quite standing headroom at 5 feet 2 inches of overhead clearance, 40 inches between the two IPS 950 engines. They are 725 horsepower each. The pods are connected by jack shafts to the engine so they're moved a little further back. Working our way around the engine room, we'll start with the 21.5 kW Onan generator, air conditioning system, it's a water maker. Above that, Delta T fans. Over to the opposite side, it's a hot water heater, water tank, and another refrigeration unit. Just behind, there's a Seakeeper 9 gyro stabilizer, that's an option on this boat. What I really like, however, is the ease of use. I mean, the fuel tanks are forward, Raycor is just along the fuel tank. The singles are standard. Double is optional. Got a sight tube. Easy access to the sea strainers. Another Raycor filter for the generator right alongside. Everything's just easy to access. It's a user-friendly boat. Looking a little closer, I can see that all of the engine mounts are marked so we can see if they start backing off easily enough just at a glance. And everything is double clamped appropriately. All the wire runs are supported properly. Nice job. Everything's done very well here. There's additional mechanical access in the cockpit. There's a 50 amp shore cord on an electric reel with the control just inside the compartment. Cleats are recessed into the bulwarks with chafing gear just above and there are even pull-up fender cleats. Behind the mezzanine seating is the main breaker panel and the battery switches. Just inside the door to the galley, we have the C-Zone control panel. This gives us electrical switching for all of the boat, as well as tank monitoring. Now, in addition to this monitoring system, we also have full boat monitoring, thanks to the Siren Marine system, which is installed standard on every Riviera. The flybridge helm is the only helm on the boat. It's port side mounted. There's a compass in the center of the console, not in line with the helm. Three 16-inch displays going across the panel. That's fabric and dark colored so no glare whatsoever like that. There are air conditioning vents to both sides, seat keeper panel, fusion stereo and the climate control. The C-Zone display, the Volvo Penta display, remote control for the forward displays. So of course I'd like to see that back here but there already is one back here. Windless control, spotlight control, bow thruster, ignitions, and then the joystick. The IPS joystick is over to the left-hand side just ahead of the digital throttle and shift. Now, we do have C-Zone controlling all of the switching on the boat, but the more important switches here at the helm, the wipers, the compass light, the courtesy lights, nav lights, all mechanical switches just behind the throttle and shift. Further back is the VHF radio. There's also a beverage holder, and then there's connectivity and USB charge ports. The seats are from Pompanet. There are two. They adjust fore and aft, up and down, and have a swivel. They've got flip armrests. There's also an option for putting a flip footrest down, and that I would like to see because when you're sitting back, it would be more comfortable. There's a footrest underneath the helm, but that seems to be only functional when we're slid forward. Now, I found that this position was great when we were pulling out of the dock, and I had a full view of the port hand side, but you don't really get a view of the stern. For that, there's another control station just at the aft end of the flying bridge. We've got joystick for the IPS and for the bow thruster. We can also get this made into a mini helm that would even include a steering wheel. Either way, this control station gives you a full view of the stern and 
the starboard side of the boat. And there's a third control station right in the cockpit with the IPS joystick, the bow thruster joystick, and engine controls just ahead. The Riviera 50 SMY has a length overall of 55 feet 10 inches, a beam of 16 feet 3 inches, and a draft of 4 feet 9 inches. With an empty weight of 56,218 pounds, 78% fuel, full water, and 5 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 62,586 pounds. With twin 725 horsepower Volvo Penta IPS 950 pod drive engines run up to 2560 RPM, our speed topped out at 33.8 knots. Best Cruise came in at 2,000 RPM and 22.6 knots. It was at that speed that the 44 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 0.5 nautical miles per gallon and a range of 403.3 nautical miles. Now with that said, I did find that my hand gravitated more towards 2,100 and 24.5 knots pretty consistently in our light conditions of less than one foot of windblown chop. At that speed, our fuel burn was 49 gallons per hour and the range was 392.7 nautical miles just a 10.6 nautical mile reduction in range for a two knot increase. If we bring the throttle back, she'll hold plane right on down to 13.2 knots, which bodes well should the seas really start to build. Comfortable boat to drive. We're in the inland waterway, so I don't have a lot of chop or wave conditions to talk about. In calm conditions, a little bit of wind blown chop, not much to talk about with the sea conditions. However, with the chop that we have combined with the wakes from passing yachts, we did find that as we cut through those waves, no hull slap, no pounding. She just slices right through. She's a blue water boat, and that's a really good indication that she is a blue water boat. Coming up on speed, when you get her up on plane, you're going to want to use the trim on the outside of the throttle. Give it about three, four shots. That'll get the stern up and the bow down into her running attitude. And that's where she seems to run best. But comfortable boat to drive and especially around the dock, she's very maneuverable. So don't lean on those throttles. Just put it in and out of gear, in and out of gear. That's it, because she will respond very quickly and very easily. The bow thruster, I don't find it to be overly powerful, just enough to get you maneuvering back and forth in the dock, but it's not going to shove you up against the dock or give you an overall controlling feeling like the throttles will if you leave them in gear. So very comfortable around the dock, as Rivieras tend to be. Have to say though, my favorite feature when we were pulling out of the dock, this opening side window. Just leaning out gives me a full view of the whole boat and I can keep my hand on the stick the whole time. Really comfortable position for coming out of the dock. Well, aside from excellent handling characteristics and the fit and finish we've come to expect from the brand, there's an awful lot to be impressed with on the 50 Sport Motor Yacht from Riviera. And that's my full sea trial and performance evaluation. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.